This video is about um, the nerve impulse transmission. So we've looked at it sort of happening as it's gone past and we've had a little oscilloscope in there and it's measured the potential difference and, and now we're going to look at how it gets from one place to another which is called uh, impulse transmission. So uh, a couple of key things about this. Uh, first of all this the impulse is going to go in one direction and I could burst into song but I won't you'll be delighted to know and there are a few reasons for that um, firstly in a, in a living organism pretty much the sort of direction is determined by where the receptor is and it's always then going to be going off into the central nervous system for processing and then it's going to be going back out and it's going to be going either to another neuron or to a gland or to a muscle. Um, so one of the things that keeps it going in, a, in one direction in a whole organism is the fact that those impulses are always, the stimulus is always coming from a receptor going into the central nervous system which is sending then an impulse out to an effector, a gland or a muscle, to do something about it. Um, and we'll look at synapses and the sort of gap between these different um, things later on. So that's one thing that keeps it all moving in one direction. And the other is that if you imagine that this bit of the membrane depolarizes as that action potential goes past, immediately as it sort of jumps onto the next bit of the membrane, and depolarizes that bit, this bit is now repolarizing. And during that repolarization, and particularly the hyperpolarization, where you'd need a really quite strong stimulus um, to, to get up to threshold, we say that it's in the nerve, it's in its refractory period. And that's where it cannot be re stimulated. So you can't actually open the sodium ion channels in that time while the potassium channels are open. So until it gets back to its resting potential, it's not going to conduct a, an impulse. So once it's been depolarized there, it's going to have to wait a bit. But this bit is in resting potential all ready to go. So what happens when we've depolarized an area um, is that We've got a plus charge on the inside and a negative charge on the outside. That's what depolarizing means. That's the action potential. So that might be a bit small. But the next bit of the membrane that's in resting potential is negative on the inside, minus 70, and a little bit positive on the outside. And this bit here is in refractory period. It's just repolarizing itself. So we get what we call a local circuit developing. Um, I'm not sure I've got the arrows the right way around. There's some kind of physics convention to do with that. Don't really care what it is. So we get a local circuit building up around here and that causes this bit to depolarize. So it causes the stimulus to open the uh, sodium ion channels again to above threshold and then you get an action potential spike there. This bit goes back into refractory period, this bit's, you know, so this bit's now plus and that bit's now minus and then we get another local circuit building up and it opens the sodium ion channels and it opens the sodium, so the impulse is passed along, it's transmitted from one bit of the axon to the other, always moving in one direction. So, things that can affect the uh, nerve impulse, and I'm sorry, I got a little bit bored with drawing proteins in the membrane on the unmyelinated one. So we've got two sorts of nerves. We've got ones that have got this myelin sheath, these layers of phospholipid and myelin, this sort of fatty material around it, and we've got unmyelinated neurons. Now if you think about it, an unmyelinated neuron the axon membrane is all chocky block full of all these ion, protein ion carriers. And this works more or less as I just explained. So you get a depolarization, 
and then the next bit of remember that depolarizes the next bit and 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 the next bit the next bit the next bit I could go on I'm not going to until it's got all the way down with all those little local circuits going on if we've got a myelinated neuron so this is going to be quite slow it's going to be quite a lengthy process the key thing about unmyelinated is they give a slow transmission it's having to go through every single bit of the membrane myelin though is an electrical insulator so there are so it doesn't allow any ion movement and these, these gaps, this bit, can be up to about a millimetre long. And in between the myelin bit, so it's sort of wrapped around the axon, we've got our protein channels and carriers to give us our minus 70 on the inside and our plus charge on the outside. So when an action potential hits here, that local circuit is now going about a millimetre further down. Which is brilliant because this means that that uh, transmission can kind of bob along between the nodes of Ronvier and it's sort of a, almost like a jumping between the nodes. So the action potential forms at the node we get a long local circuit to the next node and an action potential will form there. And so we say that the conduction is saltatory. Salty. No, I can't spell. You spell it like saltatory. Saltatory. So, saltatory conduction. And this is much faster because it's jumping from node to node. So you've got these long, longer local circuits. So you need to know the, the nodes of Ronvier, that the ion channels are only in the nodes, and that these circuits are longer, and that speeds up the conduction by a saltatory conduction. I think that's about all you need to know about that. Nope. Not thinking of anything else now. So, we need to know some other things that can speed up um, nerve conduction. And well, I've got two on my list. Temperature. Obviously, the higher the temperature, the more respiration the cells can do. Mitochondria are working faster, the enzymes are all working faster. Get more ATP, diffusion's faster, active transport's faster, so an increase will increase speed. Uh, we then come to the tricky thing about axon diameter. So, um, squid and invertebrates who don't have any myelin have and um, to speed up their conduction have much wider axon diameters than the unmyelinated cells in vertebrates now the axon the speed of conduction in part depends on the um, on the resistance that the axoplasm is putting on the movement of ions and therefore as we increase axon diameter, what we've got is less resistance. And a higher speed. So a squid's giant axon will give you a much faster transmission speed. So, those are the things. I've just remembered what I was going to tell you about this one. Um, because obviously if you think about it, 
that sodium potassium pump using ATP up. If you've got myelination it's using far less ATP in order to conduct the nerve impulse over the, a similar distance because you're having to repolarize and have that sodium potassium pump at f far less locations along the neuron. And that, I think, really is all I know about transmission.